I'm Dave. And I'm Andrew, and we are the IB English Guys. Folks, today we want to talk about a topic that I think you all want to hear about. It's with respect to paper one, and it's how to get a seven. That's right. We're going to look at a sample paper. Today we're going to look at a cartoon that the student responded to. Then we're going to take a look at the key rubric terms. And then we're going to explore a student answer. And we think this answer in particular is a really strong paper and it earned a seven in our class. Yeah, one of my students actually just wrote this paper last week and she's given us permission to use this. So let's all benefit from her great work and try to improve our paper one skills. Why do we like this piece of writing so much, Mr. Giles? Well, we love the writing, we love the deep thinking. So there's a lot of just really excellent ex exploration of nuance and subtleties in this cartoon. This writer is very detailed. She takes what most people see, she goes beyond, and she explores deeply, okay? What do you say we take a quick peek at the cartoon that she wrote on and have a brief discussion about that, Mr. Giles? And in our previous video on cartoons, we offered you, a, a, I think, a pretty good mnemonic, and that is Coral Needs Our Care and Love. Coral Needs Our Care and Love. I do remember that. The C, Mr. Giles, stands for the composition. And what do you see in the composition of this particular cartoon? Well, I'm thinking about what's, you know, what's in the foreground, what's in the background. I see, I see Kim Jong-un who's sitting at his desk and he's hunched over. I see, again, I'm the, the general that's leading me to look at the map of the United States. And again, the graphic weight of the, of the, the colors on, on the right side is making me look at the map and the red. Um, and of course, I'm paying attention to Donald Trump's hair that's in the, in the corner there. Yeah, and for me, the N is, of course, the narrative. So I'm looking at the characters and what's the story. And of course, you know, I see a lot of graphic weight with Kim Jong-un in the lower left corner. Uh, and this character is talking to a North Korean general. And the North Korean general is explaining about sort of the fractured uh, population of the United States, specifically with respect to the disparities between the North and the South. Uh, and we see the Confederate flag there. And we really get a sense that he's trying to show the relationship between the United States and North Korea and how they're similar in the way their respective Northern and Southern parts are divided. Yeah, it's like they're in the war room and the general yeah. is like briefing uh, Kim Jong-un about what's going on. Mr. Giles, how about the O? That's objects and symbols. What might you pull out there? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things I could talk about. And this is also part of that composition because in the background we have a very strong symbol and that missile that's, that's pointed and that threatening sort of nuclear, the reference to nuclear weapons and warfare. That's a very strong symbol I'd want to talk about. Yeah, for me, I see the symbol of the stars, whether it be on the Confederate flag or the stars on the map representing Confederate statues in the southern part of the United States. I think we need to do something with those stars. That seems to be a key symbol as well. Uh, lastly, Mr. Giles, uh, or, not, or next, we have uh, the color. What would you say about the color? Yeah, I think the color red is very striking on the map. Again, we think about the color red being significant um, in the United States when we talk about sort of red states and blue states, and I think that that red is significant. Uh, the red of that Confederate flag, um, those are those draw uh, they draw our eyes with the graphic weight, but this also quite significant. Of course, that's contrasted with the black um, uh, clothing that Kim Jong Un is wearing, and I think again those colors are significant. Right, and moving on to the last aspect, of course, is language. Now, much of the language on this is done in panels, and that's given more for context. For example, Confederate statues and Kim Jong-un. Those are purely for information for us as the viewer, but the key words I would unpack, I'd look at the word war and talk about, I would probably link that up with the missile, and I would really focus on those words North and South, because they are trying to play with that dichotomy of the North and South, whether it's in Korea or in the United States, and they're using that to show the similarities between this situation. Yeah, and again, that's the irony. It's kind of a play on words, because the North and South could refer to the United States or or it can refer to the of course North and South Korea that were at war and how are completely sure. politically divided. It's ironic and being a political cartoon irony should be present right. Yeah. Now Mr. Giles if I were going or the students outline I would like to present that for you right now and we'll give you access to the entire paper you can look in the underneath the video and find that but you can see the way this student uh, constructed her paper. She started with a good intro that led to a thesis. How about after that Mr. Giles? Yeah, and then she's going to look at the portrayal of the two leaders, and that's part of the narrative and the characterization of them, how they're drawn, and the significance of them. And then from that, she's going to look at setting and atmosphere. 
and how setting and atmosphere are are an essential part of the composition of right. the piece. When she's done with the setting and the atmosphere, she's going to spend considerable time unpacking symbols, Mr. Giles. She's going to be looking at uh, the map and facial expressions. She'll be looking at stars, and she'll actually write two paragraphs offering different interpretations of the stars. And lastly, she'll talk about the symbol of the missile. Uh, and then she'll end her paper with a conclusion, trying to marry all these ideas together and talk about some so what or future implications. That's great. Okay, we want to take a look at the guiding question that the student responded to for this particular uh, cartoon. And it reads, how does the author use visual elements and layout to communicate a message? All right, so obviously we have to have the words visual elements and layout in our thesis, Mr. Jaws. What do you say we pop that thesis in right now? Let's read that out and talk about why we like this student's thesis. Okay. Chapat's use of visual elements and layouts highlights the apathy of selfish world leaders towards social injustices as they coldly disregard division, which could lead to war and permanent separation. Wow, Mr. Giles, that's a very, very complex and sophisticated thesis. You know, I almost want to break it into two sentences, which of course would be fine, but this student has taken it in one sentence. It's grammatically accurate and it works. What do you like about the thesis? Well, it's got the guiding question. It's, it's keeping that focus in mind. I think that's really important. Um, it's talking about, again, how these, how these leaders are apathetic towards the injustices within their countries, and I think that's important. But then it's leading to division, and I think division and, and separation and permanent separation is really central to the cartoon. Yeah, you can tell that this student really understands the cartoon just by looking at the sophistication and eloquence of the thesis. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and look at a couple sample body paragraphs from this student. And specifically, we're going to look at the two body paragraphs she's written on stars, okay? And as we go through the paragraph, we want to break this down into two sections of analysis. First, we'd like to look at the two paragraphs only looking at criterion A and B. And for A, we're going to look for insightful interpretation. Uh, and then for B, we're going to look for insightful analysis. That's right. Mr. Giles, you want to talk a little bit about how these are different? Yeah. So in criteria A, we're talking about the interpretation of the subtleties and implications of the text. So this is where the writer, the student, is going to show deep thinking about an interpretation of these sort of implications and deeper ideas and subtle details that connect to deeper ideas. The analysis, on the other hand, is criteria B. This is where the student is going to analyze and discuss the author's choices and the techniques. They're two different things. We have to show interpretation of the bigger ideas and the subtleties and impl implications, but we also have to show analysis of features. Yeah, and let's, I think the best way to see this is just to dive right in and look at the paragraph, Mr. Giles. So, That's great. Uh, we can see her topic sentence, and she says, Chapat illustrates the irony of power through his usage of stars once again insinuating the lack of action taken to protect citizens from oppression. And then, Mr. Giles, I can see a huge orange section that we've highlighted here where she's talking about the visual of stars. Can you talk a little bit about what she's doing here and why you think this is interesting analysis? Yeah, she's, she's focusing on the author's choices. And again, putting Chapat in the sentence, saying Chapat uses the stars to represent. This, again, is analysis. You're thinking about the author's, using that star as a symbol, and again, the connection to the sort of deeper ideas and the effects of that. Yeah. She does that throughout this whole section. Really smart. And I love how that then leads to the blue. Okay, so what? What are the implications of the author's choice and use of star? Well, Mr. Giles, the implications are that society will always be in danger and could possibly reach a state of anarchy. Those are the implications of the choice. Yeah, and I love that because that connects up to that, that central idea about division that's so important. Let's then, look at her, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, the second body paragraph and you notice these paragraphs are both about stars, but they're about different aspects of how those stars are used. And that's why there are two paragraphs on stars. I just wanted to point that out. And I'd like to add to that, for a student to write two full paragraphs on one specific detail really shows deep insight and attention to subtleties and nuances of the text. All right, Giles, look at that big section of orange here where she's analyzing the authorial choice of stars in a different way. Can you talk a little bit about how it's different this time and what she's saying? Yeah, she's, she's talking about, again, how the author, the, the illustrator, is using the symbol of stars and talking about how that they are used in a negative light and connecting to the stars that are on the North Korean figure's clothing 
um, to to show the contrast of there, and and that's I think really interesting. Yeah, and I think she picks up on the irony of the fact that stars are typically seen as something positive in terms of connotation, but in this case, the irony of the political cartoon is that these stars represent something very very negative. The so what. The attention, the insightful analysis, the insightful interpretation of subtleties and details and implications. We see that at the end of the paragraph, and that is that these two superpowers, uh, Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un, respectively, they're not really acting for the best interest of their people, but in the best interest of themselves, and that's the larger implication of the yeah, text. That's great. So now let's go on to criteria C and D, and criteria C and D are really important because we're thinking about the word focus. And we're focused on our thesis and we're focused on the guiding question. We have to keep those things in mind. And when we look at D language, we're looking for really eloquent, sophisticated, elevated vocabulary, strong accuracy with respect to complex grammar, and we're looking for some voice. And I think that we can see this clearly indicated by the gray and red highlights here. Mr. Giles, I like the word power, social issues that we see sort of bookending the first paragraph. And at the end of the second paragraph, we see the phrase fulfilling their own agendas. For me, this is really critical. Uh, all of these keywords can be linked directly up to the thesis. They're echoing words from the thesis. They're echoing words and ideas from other paragraphs. It shows a clear and unified paper where I could literally draw a line between thesis, topic sentences, and concluding sentences straight down the paper. And, I, and lastly, I think the guiding question is asking her to talk about visual elements, and the stars are a clear visual element. So I think that's, again, a strength of the paper. Might have used the word visual element in that paragraph, but I think, again, this is a focused paper about the visual elements of, of the entire cartoon, really right. uh, strong. Lastly, you'll notice a, a section I've highlighted in red, and uh, you can read that to yourself, uh, but I just noted that these are two very complex, sophisticated, and elevated sentences. I think this, the student shows great command of language, strong voice, uh, and if you read the entire paper, which of course is linked under the video, you'll see many examples of confidence with language, which we believe has this paper heading toward a score of? Seven. Yeah, for sure. I think it's strong on all four criteria, if not kind of hitting the fives on all four criteria. It's really a great paper and again, written in a time situation. So hats off. Um, and I think it's a great model. So thank you to the student for offering this as a sample because this could really help you guys just to look at what you can do with your own writing and try to look at good writing and look at strong writers to to basically, you know, borrow what they're doing. Okay, so in closing, we just want to remind you of five things to think about when you're working on paper one. Uh, number one, make sure you're always focusing on authorial choices and explaining and analyzing them in detail. Giles. Interpret the subtleties and implications of the text. Stay focused. Use the keywords of the question and topic sentences and concluding sentences throughout your paper. Elevate your vocabulary and really try to work on some complex sentences, but also some short, impactful sentences. And lastly, we recommend you keep on watching these videos. Uh, folks, I've got to be honest, our students score a lot of sixes and sevens. We'd like to bring you along for the ride as well, okay? So thank you for watching this video. We hope it brings value, and see you next time. Bye-bye.